and welcome to our special on-site edition of The Library Show. I'm Holly Browning and today we're going to be taking a tour of Lebanon's lovely historic library and later we're going to be talking about a free educational resource for kids. But first, I'm here with the lovely Julie McClellan. She's the library's uh, director, and she's going to give us um, a tour of the library today. Thanks for doing that, Julie. Oh, well, thank you for asking me. I appreciate it. Yes. And I, we've started here in the historic section of the library. So can you tell us the, the way, the unique way the library came to be? Well, I will. Um, this is a Carnegie Library, as I think most of our uh, viewers probably already know. Uh, we opened in 1908, but it took four long years mm -hmm. for uh, local citizens to uh, get from formation of a board to opening the door. Right. And there were lots of problems along the way. Um, an instrumental person in forming the library was Chester Maple, and he had circulated a uh, petition um, so that we would um, ask um, Andrew Carnegie, mm -hmm. who was had made it known that he was funding libraries, uh, so that we would petition him for funds for a library. Mm -hmm. And that process took about two years. Um, we got the notice that uh, the funds were coming and uh, the library board was formed and everyone was excited. The plans were made. This was designed by a firm in Columbus, mm -hmm. um, E.W. Hart, and um, it was going to be very unique. It was going to face the corner, which is uh, kind of unique for Carnegie libraries right. um, anywhere, but especially in Ohio, there's only one other one in mm -hmm. Bucyrus that does that. And the whole community was very excited except for two people. <laughs> and so what happened was um, a lawsuit was lodged that today we would call a zoning issue. Okay. Um, they decided they didn't want a library in the neighborhood. And it was actually um, the person who owned the house that was where the museum is now. Okay. And so she started a lawsuit. And then um, a second lawsuit was begun about taxation. And it was actually headed up by Mr. Stubbs, who then was the owner of the Golden Lamb, okay. which was over 100 years old already. Mm -hmm. And the whole crux of the matter was um, that petition went around and the city or the village at that time agreed to fund the library um, at $1,000 per year if Mr. Carnegie would give um, Lebanon $10,000 for the library. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody voted on that $1,000. Wow. And so it turned out that there were lots of lawsuits like that all over the country. And um, Mr. Maple, Chester Maple, was the city attorney at that time. Right. And so he personally took it all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court. Wow. And it took a year and a half. Wow. Can you imagine? No. And um, <laughs> a year and a half. And when um, our when we won our case, mm -hmm. uh, then all the other cases around the country were vacated. And so, um, if you read the Carnegie Library history, right. the book, um, that's what our our uh, claim to fame is. Wonderful. So then they had to get busy and finish the library. It had begun, right? And um, they had to hurry up and finish it. But if you a couple of interesting facts, mm -hmm. if you look at the Roman numerals over the door, okay. they um, work out to 1906, but we weren't open until January 1st of 1908. 1908, that's so right, okay. that's why. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, one other thing I'm going to clear up too, a lot of people say, oh, um, you know, the library was caving in, your, your window was crooked on the um, Broadway side. Uh -huh. And what happened was is they were building it, and yes, it settled, but it wasn't a building problem. There used to be an old um, jail on this site. This was always reserved for civic purpose ever since really? Lebanon was laid out, and it was a log cabin um, jail and they had put logs way down deep so people couldn't dig out. Oh and my goodness. And some of those logs remained and the weight of the library walls uh, crushed the rotted timbers and that's what caused that. So wow, interesting. We can dispel any other rumors, that's <laughs> yes. what happened. Yeah. So tell us about, um, I know a lot of people talk about this beautiful, you know, woodwork and the, um, the designs in here, they're just lovely. Yes, um, so that was something that the architect, original architect designed and when the library was refurbished in 1988, as much of the original was kept and uh, we didn't try to pretend that we were um, 
you know, uh, adding on an antique library. There's right, no, right. no pretense there. Um, but everything just got refinished and improved and um, uh, enhanced right. um, as opposed to replaced. Mm -hmm. um, it's leaded glass. Um, the woodwork is the same. Um, yeah, we're, we're pretty proud of it. Absolutely, yes, yeah. absolutely. So this is in the front area here. When we walk in, we have the juvenile section. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, we chose to put the juvenile section in this old part of the library for a reason. Um, over the years, I've worked here a long time, and people would tell me that when they were a kid and they walked into the library, they remembered the feeling they had that it felt like walking into a palace, that right. it was a special Something, space. A special place. Right, a right. special place. And so instead of putting the kids, um, you know, back in some corner or some new wing, we decided this is where they needed to make their memories. Right, right. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And we do have a new section that we want to take a look at. Is that correct? We do. We okay. um, one very popular new genre uh, is the graphic novel. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it can be a novel. It can be nonfiction. It can be just a plain old comic book, but they're all called graphic novels. Mm -hmm. And uh, that happens to be behind us over here. And um, graphic novels can be for adults, teens, or kids. And so we put the kids' materials here so here. it's easy mm -hmm. to find. And then we have the adults the adult um, section right. elsewhere. Right, and okay. I'd be thrilled to show that to you later. A um, couple of other things I just want to point out. Of course, Mr. Carney, I think everybody recognizes him. Mm -hmm. um, but there's another gentleman uh, pictured over here on the wall, and um, his name is William Elmer Harmon. Mm -hmm. And he grew up here in Lebanon, Ohio, and went away and made his fame and fortune uh, actually in New York mm -hmm. and um, he and his brother had a uh, they were one of the first uh, companies that not only built houses but also provided the mortgages uh, mm -hmm. to um, new homeowners really? and um, they made a lot of money and um, his brother was very uh, involved in early aviation um, Mr. Harmon was a patron of the arts, particularly the um, um, Harlem Renaissance. He mm -hmm. was a benefactor to a lot of the artists and performers at that time. Mm -hmm. And he never forgot his hometown. And he made, come on in Jennifer, you're fine. And um, he came in and um, you know, really supported things here in Lebanon. You see a Harmon Park here in Lebanon. Well, there are Harmon Parks all over the country that he funded. Um, recreation was a special thing. I did not thing. know that. I yeah. thought that was distinctly no. you know, Lebanon's Harmon Park. I Wonderful. I think the number is something like 130 parks. Really? Um, okay. Yes. And um, Harmon Hall, which is where the Historical Society Museum is now, Correct. Mm -hmm. well that was originally a public gymnasium. Think pre-YMCA. Really? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the high school played basketball. Uh, oh, here. So, that's nice. Yeah, that's the nice, green, yeah. that was a basketball court. Um, he also uh, left money for the Harmon Civic Trust, mm -hmm. which um, really is one of the unique things that makes sets Lebanon apart. There is a, a pool of money there that is available when things need to happen mm -hmm. um, for the good of the community. And a lot of communities don't have something like that. So Mr. Harmon comes into our story. Um, it goes like this. So we got $10,000 from Mr. Uh, Carnegie. Mm -hmm. And I told you about that time lapse between the time the four years right, between the time we get the mm -hmm. money and form the board and the time we open. Right. Well, just as in our lifetime that there have been periods of um, economic inflation, well, that was one of those times. And so when they got to the end, the $10,000 was not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. And so um, they called on Mr. Harmon and they asked him if he would contribute. And he did, he wrote checks right out of his own checking account for us. Um, in today's dollar, I calculated it a few years ago, it'd be about um, $80,000. Wow, wow. The equivalent of about $80,000. I think it was like uh, $3,500. Right. Um, so anyway, um, he made it possible for the books to be um, on the shelves, uh, things to be um, furniture and things like that. 
it wouldn't have opened without an extremely Mr. important man for our oh, history. Oh yes, yes, absolutely for the library and for the community. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the only stipulation he had was that this plaque be placed in honor of his uh, late mother, so um, who Mary loved Wood books Harmon. and always um, promoted uh, reading and uh, learning in their home. That's lovely. Yeah, so that remains here. So we're very proud of that. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's um, take a walk and uh, look at the uh, circulation desk, the main okay. desk. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Okay. Hi, guys. You're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> So as we walk here to the the main section, yeah, I love this. This is a, this catches the eye. This beautiful stained glass. Oh, can Thank you tell you. us a little bit about that? I'd love to tell you about that. That's kind of a pet project. Uh, when the library, this edition was added in 1988, that was just a little architectural feature, an arch, an empty arch. And um, I've worked here a long time, and I used to picture. Uh, what could be there and we tried plants up there and everything else and when we got close to our centennial I thought it would be a great idea to maybe have a stained glass commissioned um, we have had a an art fund mm -hmm. um, that uh, was started by NL Bunnell when NL Bunnell died um, he was a local businessman mm -hmm. farmer he had a canning factory you know about Bunnell Hill Bunnell Road, Hill Road. Mm -hmm. yes yes mm -hmm. and also the other Bunnell Road those were where all of his bean fields were and wow. corn fields okay. and he had canneries and when he died he left the uh, library I believe it was two thousand mm -hmm. dollars and the stipulation was it was to be used for art okay. um, his sister was an artist he also donated three paintings, two of them were by her, okay. and, um, and he wanted it for art. Well, over the years, a little bust of Lincoln and, you know, a couple of other things were purchased, but really nothing much. Right. And um, time and interest and everything uh, played in our favor. And by the time our centennial was coming up, uh, the fund was about $23,000. Wow. So it had really grown. Right. So um, the board and I decided that it would be great to spend it on some art that would... Um, be great for our centennial. Right. So it was right. the perfect time. So this is actually designed by um, Valerie Sherwood Rask. Mm -hmm. uh, she grew up here at the library. Her family's been probably four generations of her family have used the library. And we worked together on coming up with the design. And it has some kind of interesting features. First of all, the library itself, um, I told her I didn't want it to be cartoony. I wanted it to be as realistic as possible. So she used the original plans for the library that that Columbus architect drew. Wow. She used that for her template. Mm -hmm. And then um, the books uh, that we have here over on the 1908 side, um, the two titles to the bottom, one is Anne of Green Gables. You'll, it's uh, very kind of hard to see. Yes. And the other is Wind in the Willows. Those are two books yeah. that were um, published in 1908. Wonderful. That's and awesome. And so that's kind of fun. Yeah. And then over on the 2008, um, the uh, Lebanon yearbook for the high school um, has been named the Trilobite since the 20s. And so we have the Trilobite and another book there. And it's just kind of fun. Um, we're really pleased with it and um, the kids all really like to see all the details and everything. Right, so. right. And it's in the perfect place, the busiest, yeah. almost the busiest place in the library here at the circulation yeah. desk. Yeah. And we're not going outside, but the other piece of artwork that I mentioned that we bought the that we spent the right. uh, funds on uh, would be the statuary in the park. In the park. Right. Yeah. So you'll have to the public will have to go and check that out. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, let's continue. We'll walk um, this way here, and uh, we'll take a look at the children's area. All right, that All sounds right. great. Which I know is a very, very popular area. Oh, my goodness. So we have, out of our 150,000-odd physical books that we have here, 50,000 books are for children. Wow. But two-thirds of our circulation, the number of books that get checked out, Two thirds are children's books, yes. so they get really a lot of um, yes. a lot of play. Mm -hmm. We have books for kids of all ages. Mm -hmm. We were just in the a area where school age children would probably find their chapter right, books right. Mm -hmm. and um, nonfiction books and mm -hmm. such. Over here, we would have picture books. We have um, three whole shelves from here. All of these are all board books for youngers, uh, for new readers. 
For new readers, we have back over here, um, we have uh, easy readers, kind of the Dick and Jane type readers. The beginning reading. Yes, and the, yes beginning the reading. Different levels. Those, mm -hmm. are, those are great. So, lots. Um, one of my favorite things in this area would be all the uh, summer reading program t-shirts that are um, that are framed. It's not all of them. We're on our 32nd year we just finished of the summer reading program and these are some of the previous year's t-shirts. That's wonderful. So they form our artwork and uh, now the parents are coming in and telling the kids what uh, shirts they had what when shirts they were they had when they yeah, were young. So it's yeah. pretty fun. Yeah and I just love this little area here where they can come and mm -hmm. read their books with their family. Well here's something you probably don't know Holly. Mm -hmm. This table was one of the original in the original order of furniture for the library. It's really? 111 years old. No. It was just cut down. It was the trustees table and that's where they had their meetings, all these important things, but in a different little office back over there. And um, you can tell it's the same table from this little reading here wow. on, the, um, on the legs and it matches the um, cane and umbrella stand that we have. So yeah, so this table, uh, it's very sturdy, I'll just say. <laughs> No, I did not yeah. know that, and that's lovely. That's yeah. really, really neat. Yeah, so wonderful. Lots of lots of kids have enjoyed it since we cut it down um, 30, 31 years ago. Wow. So, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Where to next? Let's go um, this way here, here by the information desk. Um, here we have all of our patron computers here for upstairs. Yeah, so um, it wasn't too long ago that we had just um, 12 computers. Well, not too long before that, we only had three computers. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. so um, we've got six computers, and these are available for people of all ages, mm -hmm. uh, children, adults. Um, they're right here so that if the folks at our information desk need to help with printing or formatting or locating something on a website or whatever, mm -hmm. we're right here to help. Um, anything that anybody wants to print, they can send it to our printer and uh, it's, you know, just a little fee for, for each copy. Right. Right, right. Okay. And then um, the information desk is handy. It's pretty unpopulated right now. I think everyone cleared out with the TV <laughs> program being filled. Um, but there's Miss Marissa over there. Um, so if a person needed help finding a book, um, finding out about a book we don't have, can we get it? Um, any other kind of, it used to be a, almost like a trivia contest here every day mm -hmm. because uh, people used to call up with some pretty interesting questions. Right. Internet's right. kind of wiped out a little bit of that. But right. um, the information desk, we love to help around here. We, we pride ourselves on customer service. So if you ever come in the library and you need some help, don't hesitate to ask. Right. They will find, they oh, will yes. find it. I know that they do. They yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it's in the perfect place here. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us about one of my favorite things. Okay. Tell us about this timeline that comes around. Okay, so that's very interesting that when we were getting ready for a centennial, we had a little meeting and it was kind of a, uh, brainstorming session for all the different things that we could do and um, the uh, park was already kind of a plan uh, but the um, stained glass came out of that the statuary came out of that and my my old boss rainy neighbor the former director of the library he said I think it would be fun to put a timeline up on this kind of blank area mm -hmm. for the for the centennial year and so we had some help from Pew and Associates and uh, they helped us develop it. It's actually printed on paper uh, that's like a post-it note. Wow. And it was only gonna stay up there for a year and I got to pick all the books. Um, there's Mr. Uh, Maple, the very first thing at 1908. That's yep. Mr. Chester Maple, the gentleman I mentioned earlier. Um, and then we picked out classic books. The, my criteria was if it came over the counter and someone was checking it out, we wouldn't even think twice. Okay. Not like, wow, this is an old, you know, whatever. Right. And so these are true classics and you can kind of kinda see, frame. right, yeah. for uh, each decade, and you can kind of see the march of time and ideas and culture when you look at that and right the changes in culture mm -hmm. yeah you can see it um and but i kind of picture the librarians coming to work in the morning 
getting the book out of the box, putting the stamps on it, putting on the shelf, winding the clock, you know, tending the right. books, and this is just kind of the parade of, of books that Time, has right. come through here. So it's fun. We probably have a few empty spots. When we developed the list, we didn't realize we had a few, like, gaps there. So <laughs> someday I'll get busy and add a few more. Yeah. Um, we were going to take it down after a year, and it's been such a popular feature is, that we just is. left it. Yeah, yeah. And around here we have, this is the nonfiction, mostly, right, correct? The nonfiction? Yes, okay. correct. So um, we pride ourselves on our book collection. Um, a lot of libraries are cutting down the number of uh, books that they have. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're going to shorter shelves because they're not going to have as many books because they're relying on ebooks. Right. We are all into ebooks, mm -hmm. but. We have not given up on physical books. We love our physical books. Yes, we love mm -hmm. them both, and we're committed to this collection as well as the electronic yeah. ones. So um, down here, there's everything nonfiction for um, adults and young adults. We have everything from cookbooks to how to fix your car to um, existentialism and you know outer space, you name it, history, you'll find it here. And um, the information desk can help you find that. Right. Now, we also have Lebanon is a big commuter town. And um, our CD collection of uh, books continues to be very popular. Mm -hmm. It's one of our best circulating uh, areas. Um, and those are right over there. And we have something brand new. We do. Um, yeah, we added um, one of the, uh, our staff members, Dylan Posa, he came up with the idea and kind of shepherded this in. Um, we now have board games that are available to check out. And um, you can see um, how many players c need to play it, how long it'll take you, and a recommended age range. That's and so those check out just like books. Yeah, it's such a great idea. Yeah, it really we think is. it'll kind of foster some together time. And here's an aisle that a lot of people miss. It's our new book aisle. Holly, did you know we get about 13,000 new books every single year? No, I did not. Yeah, 13,000 new books. So this is where the adult and um, adult books and also the young adult books sit for the first four months that they're in the library. And so all of these are just the last four months worth of um, nonfiction and just think of all the ones that are already checked out. Right, and then they start so, rotating and the new ones come. Right, mm -hmm. so if you only have a little bit of time to come in the library, um, I highly recommend checking uh, this out. Checking this right. aisle and um, seeing what we have. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's check out the the back section here. That would be oh, for sure. our youth. Is that okay. correct? Sounds right. perfect. Oh, wonderful. All right. And it's for the the young adults. So that would be mostly te teenage. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple of different. You can either say. Um, Young adult, like seventh grade and up, right, right, uh, twelve and up, thirteen and up. Depending on the publishing company, they have a little different um, ideas on what young adult is. Okay. So, wish we had a spot that was a little more special than this, but I think our books make it special. We buy a lot of young adult books, and they're very popular. Um, Maddie and Rachel, who do a lot of our programming, um, they keep putting up some really cool bulletin boards and dis book displays that'll be of interest to um, young adults. And there's usually a craft or some kind of activity they can do. Um, young adults have a little more time than uh, older uh, teens and um, you know people who are past high school, and so they have time to read and. You know, right. spend time here so we're right we're developing programming for them as well right right wonderful and then we have a lot of books upstairs Do oh my not? yes yes okay yeah. let's take a look okay okay all right so now we're on the mezzanine correct that's correct yeah and we've got a lot of interesting things up here so fiction all kinds of mm -hmm. novels and things like that we have a special section for mysteries, mm -hmm. science fiction, that includes fantasy. Um, we have uh, westerns, paperback romances, and um, a fairly new genre, I talked about it downstairs yeah. in the juvenile area, would be the graphic novels. And that has gotten to be 
huge. When we developed our um, a unique section for the graphic novels, we actually had uh, people Instagramming about it and coming from miles around to come to and it see out. it, which right. is hard for me to believe, but it right, happened. Right, right. So um, <laughs> here it is right back here. And um, these are all graphic novels of various kinds. Um, generally speaking, uh, people who love graphic novels, they're either a Marvel fan or a mm -hmm, DC. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, um, what was the, in the, um, um, Oh, shoot. What was the name of that book series that happened out in the Northwest and you were either team this or team that? Oh, uh, Twilight. Twilight. Of course. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, so, you know. You have Team Marvel and Team DC. Right. There you go. <laughs> right. And never the twain shall meet. They just don't want it. And then um, manga is a very popular category as, and then the rest of them are, I'll just call it miscellaneous. Uh, they could be just anything from classic, um, things like Star Wars and um, things that used to be comic books, Doctor Who, um, you name it. It could be just about any of them. And some of them aren't, aren't in series. They're just very creative takes on a situation or a historical event or something. Right. And these are very popular uh, oh my circulated gosh. books, right? Yeah. The, so um, I don't know the statistic off, off the top of my head, but this is one of those areas that um, has one of the highest circulation rates of any area in our That's library. Wonderful. Yeah. People it's really take it off. stacks of them. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Julie. Well, thank you very much for that. Oh, you're welcome. I think coming up next, my co host, Mike Kletzley, is going to be joined by Julie, and they're going to take a look at the Technology Center and our wonderful story time room. So stay tuned. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school and I didn't do it. My support team never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew who I could become as a person. I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to the show. My name is Mike Kletzley, and I'm joined by our library's director, Julie McClellan, who's going to take us on a tour of the Tech Center oh, and fantastic. the Story Time Room. Fantastic. Um, to, right now, you're in the lower level of the library. Uh, we redid it about four and a half years ago, and I think it's uh, been a big improvement, don't you think? I Mike's do. been around the library a long Very time. Very much. Um, we're, right now, we're at the entrance of our Story Time Room, and Story Time has been a part of uh, the library's mission for probably as long as the doors have been open. Yeah. Um, we wanted to make it something special. Uh, when I was talking to Holly, I told uh, her that we chose the old part of the library to house our juvenile books because we wanted to give kids a, a special memory of a space. Well, down in a modern space like this, it's kind of hard to make memories, and so we decided to make them with art. And um, so if you look above us, uh, beautiful, uh, big fully fashioned book is up here. Um, it was uh, created by the folks uh, at MDS, uh, Marvin and um, Ron over in Fairfield, and they made this giant book. I think it weighs 300 pounds of fiberglass. Wow. And uh, all the artwork was done by um, Tara Callahan King, an artist from um, Indiana who specializes in murals and things like that. And they also created these stacks of books. So what we wanted to do is have just a very memorable archway into the story time room. And I think that was pretty successful. I think it tells them it's a special place. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, so anyway, but we do story times down here. This is a great place for our uh, homework club and other activities, craft classes and things like that for kids. Uh, this room has gotten a lot of use for different things, including story time. Yes, it has. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you for introducing us to well, the outside sure. of it. Absolutely. Shall we step inside and take a look around? That I'm pretty proud good. of the artwork inside. Well, Julie, you mentioned the artwork before. This has a whole new level of artwork in it, doesn't it? Oh, it absolutely does. Um, the folks from MDS um, created the backdrop for the stage. Um, it's a big open book and it's purposely plain because we can use it for a projection screen. Nice. So that works out great, but it sort of uh, frames the whole stage area. Um, this part over here, um, it is, to me, it's better than I even imagined. It was created by Casey Christenberry, who grew up here in the library. He was actually one of my story time friends when he when I was the story time right? uh, lady, and he was probably three when I met him. Well, he's a professional graphic artist in Chicago now, and he created all of this digitally, as well as the artwork that we'll see in the uh, uh, tech center in just a few moments. Wonderful. But. Um, this was such a huge file. This is actually done the way they do car wraps. Oh my goodness. So this was such a huge digital file that um, he actually had to put it on an external hard drive and send it a uh, special carrier uh, by mail and for us to get it to print out all oh of the gosh. vinyl. So it's applied um, to the glass. And so not only does it is it decorative, but it also um, forms a little uh, visual barrier between the next room, which is our craft room, could be a little distracting, all those tables mm -hmm. with fun craft materials on them and things yep. like that, and uh, the story time room. So we're well, pretty proud of that. Meaningful to know that one of our grow up patrons has created that for us. I know. He told me that may or may not be you, Miss Julie. So anyway, <laughs> so that, that's kind of fun. And he used um, pages of history books and things like that. Uh, that's actually the library history that's written on the pages of those that's books. That's wonderful. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we do story times four days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we serve children from infants on their parents' laps to, oh, I'd say the oldest who come to story time might be seven, um, uh, somewhere right around there. And we have story times during the day and even one in the evening on Mondays. Well, there are plenty of chances to take part. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's absolutely. wonderful. Well, good. Well, thank you for showing us the story time. Well, there. you're welcome. Should we take a look at the tech center? I think we should. Okay, let's. So we are at the entrance to the Tech Center, just off the story time room where we were. You said you had some things to share with us about the Tech Center? Yeah, um, the Tech Center is kind of a unique space. We um, opened it up about four and a half years ago, as mm -hmm. I said. And um, before we had the Tech Center, we kind of had some problems upstairs with the whole digital world colliding with the traditional library mm -hmm. uh, world. Uh, people needed help figuring out how to download ebooks, use their iPhones, well, what do I do with an iPad, um, and it was frankly kind of gumming up the works. Mm -hmm. We had Wi-Fi too and um, a lot of people were trying to use their laptops and um, um, they didn't like the noise in the library. We have a pretty noisy library and they wanted a quiet sp spot and there was a lot of tension and it was a lot of stress for the staff and we were trying to figure out what we were going to do about it. This area originally when the library was expanded in 1988 was designated as a children's uh, library, ah. a future children's library. And I never could figure out how to make that work because you can't see between the two floors. Would the kids just get left down here? Mm -hmm. Would it be, hurry up, we're going upstairs? I just didn't think it was the best idea. Yeah. So um, actually, Mike, uh, the tech center, I woke up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water one busy summer. Uh, it had been a busy summer with the reading program. And I said, I know. We'll divide it and we'll make the digital world at the lower level and the traditional library services on the main floor. Nobody will lose anything what they, of what they have, but we will add this different dimension. And no matter what happens with ebooks, traditional books, whatever, each um, um, world can exist on its own and not interfere with the other. And it's worked out great. And this has been a quiet area. Um, it's a designated so and it's for 12 and up. So um, it's really worked out great. It has, it has. So Lebanon also, we are right um, kind of center to a lot of um, community colleges. We have like Sinclair, we have commuter students with 
mom, um, some of the others. And so it's been a great place for people to work. It really has. It's, yeah. it's really developed into its own special space. Yeah. So when we go inside, we'll see that we have public computers, different kinds of workstations. And I'll kind of whisper when we go in there because as you know, it's a quiet zone. Yep. Okay, are you ready? All right. So we're in the tech center, the quiet area. Yes, that's right. So, so we're whispering. Uh, we have 16 computers for the public to use um, that have all the word processing capabilities and things like that. Um, if anybody needs to print anything or get help with anything, our staff here uh, can help. Um, We've got some um, other kind of interesting features of the building that I will also talk about. That'd be great. You had mentioned yeah. these windows at one point. Yeah. Something special about So them? what I want to say is when we designed this area, one of the concerns was, is this going to be modern? Is this going to fit in mm -hmm. with the library? Yeah. And so we made sure that many of the components of the old library would be present. So the window that we have up here, um, it actually includes uh, the design that's in the leaded glass from upstairs. Sorry, we'll be quiet here in just a minute. <laughs> Um, we also have uh, the color scheme is pretty much what the color scheme is on the outside of the library. Nice. Uh, we have uh, the hexagon, uh, the original library is a hexagon. So our sound clouds and our carpet um, are hexagons. And tying all that together. Tying That's great. it all together. And uh, even the brick we brought in from the original library, we brought the brick in. That's wonderful. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the sound booth. Oh, that's a cool thing. So um, we learned about this shortly after we developed the tech center. It wasn't quite available yet, so this was a late addition. Um, this is a sound booth that you can actually make a phone call or have a conference call. Um, if you step inside and speak at a normal volume, the people out here will not hear a word you're saying. What a wonderful addition to yeah. a quiet zone. Yeah, it's been great. And especially for, um, we have a lot of graduate students who uh, work from afar from mm -hmm. their university and they have to uh, report into their uh, faculty advisor mm -hmm. um, once a week or whatever. This is a a quiet zone that they can count on. Patron friendly. Yes, absolutely. Um, you'll also notice that we have quite a bit of artwork in this room as well. Um, as we came in, you've got the um, designs on the uh, glass walls. We've got a design over here, kind of a big version of the library. And then uh, as we pan around, you'll you'll eventually see some um, panels that are of the library itself. And those were also done by Casey Christenberry. Wow. So you definitely know you're connected to the old library, but yes. it feels very fresh and new. It does. Yeah. Beautiful way to do it. We have a lot of special opportunities down here too, Mike, for our patrons. Um, it is a tech center in addition to a quiet study area. Uh, we added 3D printing early on. Mm. We just added a resin-based 3D printer just this week. Um, people can come down and use equipment here. Um, back over here we have uh, scanners. You can take old slides and turn them into, digitize them and wow. put them on a disc. Uh, this beautiful machine is an iMac and it has the complete Adobe uh, creative suite on it and so patrons can book time on it and learn about Photoshop and um, all kinds of things. Wow. Now if if you don't know how to use this we have classes you can take online and to learn how to use different wow. things uh, through um, uh, what's it called? The, the Linda? The Linda. Yeah, yeah. Linda.com. Thank you. Um, 
he works in the tech center, so he works with this stuff all the time. But you could learn how to use the programs and then do some, uh, you know, creative work, make a film, uh, produce music. So if I don't feel like I have a skill level, that shouldn't stop me. I should, no, it shouldn't I can stop learn you through at the all. System. Yeah, Wonderful. even we even have the drawing pad, which is great for artists. Nice, kind of a new thing. Now the nice thing is uh, that I want to make sure people know about the whole purpose of this tech center is to make to bridge the digital divide. Mm -hmm. So many people are kind of, um, really everything's going digital and uh, there are a few people who feel like they might be left behind. Mm -hmm. um, they get a cell phone, they don't know how to use it. The kids give them an iPad for Christmas, what do I do with mm -hmm. it? Um, it could be just very basic things. We can help they can stop in or make an appointment and we'll sit down and go through your device with you, troubleshoot it, show you how to use it and uh, make it so that uh, digital is friendly to your life rather than a unwelcome intruder. Yeah, we enjoy helping people with that. Well, I can tell. It's I great. I can tell. So it's yeah. great. It's great. Well, anything else you'd like to show before we look at the conference room with the uh, 3D printers? I just want to let people know that we also have old school uh, newspapers and magazines down here. This is a great place to bring a cup of coffee and have a quiet time after a walk or something yes. and sit down and read the newspaper. So Yes. That, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Wonderful. That's Beautiful great. down here. Oh, thank you for thank what you. you've done to design it. Oh, gosh. I had lots of help. Um, this was... Um, uh, designed in part by uh, SHP Leading uh, Design and Jenny Gallo uh, did a lot of the interior designs. It really came out well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, should we take a look in the conference yeah, room? Yeah, let's. Well, Ms. Julie, this is the conference room of the library. And yes. It's got the 3D printers in it as well. Yes. Will you give us some tour of this as well? This is a great space. Um, we do classes here, um, both uh, within the library mm -hmm. and also uh, sometimes we bring in presenters from outside of the library, mm -hmm. but it's all library programming. Um, these are uh, kind of versatile tables. We can take them apart and put them in any configuration. I know that you do ACT prep classes right. and occasionally probably move the tables around to, you know, kind of more of a... Um, classroom right. type effect. Um, the nice thing is Holly's kind of demonstrating right now we have um, the screen uh, back here and you can cast whatever you're working on on your computer actually to the screen. So we can teach people how to use some of the databases and instructional materials that we have um, for free on our, on our website. That's a wonderful capability. Yeah, it's really helpful, and uh, that's actually a whiteboard there. You can uh, write on it and use it kind of like uh, you would a chalkboard in a classroom. So this has been a real flexible space. Um, we do instruction on all of our different um, technologies here. That orange one down there, that's the new resin printer we're all pretty excited about. And uh, if anybody's interested in learning about 3D printing, check for our classes or uh, contact us. We'll show you how to use the programs and uh, you can print something. Yes. It's a buck to order it and uh, 10 cents a gram. So uh, pretty cheap entertainment. It is. Yeah. And they come out well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you for the great tour. Oh, you're welcome. Very knowledgeable and it's a beautiful library. Oh, thank you. We're very proud of it, aren't we? We are. We are. We are. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ms. Julie. All right. And we'll be back soon with our next segment. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. 
Your hometown source, the Lebanon Channel, is now on YouTube. I know how fortunate I am. Just search City of Lebanon, Ohio to connect with everything that's happening right here. And, and that's going to be an exciting part about this walking tour. Subscribe to receive exclusive local content available only on the Lebanon Channel. Wow, Neil Armstrong's coming to my launch. I was so excited about that. That's the City of Lebanon, Ohio, now on YouTube. That's what makes us uh, Lebanon, Ohio a great yeah, place buddy. to live. Yeah. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mike Kletzley with my co-host Holly Browning, who's going to take us on a tour of one of our databases. Absolutely. Kids InfoBits. Kids InfoBits. That's what we're going to be talking well, about we today. Know? Well, Kids InfoBits is an excellent resource out there for young learners. Um, I was really excited to find out about it as a homeschool mom. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it is a database that teaches you how to search databases nice. and it has great resources for homework, school projects and like I said homeschool, um, anything um, like that. It's it's wonderful. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. well, I know a lot of people are afraid of pop-ups and things that will come up that could be inappropriate for children. So mm -hmm. is there some defenses against that on this site? Um, absolutely. All the content is age appropriate. Mm -hmm. It's reliable. Um, there's a broad range of topics, but it is catered towards children, children's subject. There, you have no worry of things coming up, um, you know, from like a YouTube or a Wikipedia mm -hmm. or anything like that that's going to throw in adult information. Um, like it's it's strictly for children, and it's for children to learn how to navigate. Um, how to search a database. So it's not just for the information itself, it's for them to, you know, if I, if I tell my son, let's learn about um, snakes or, or bats think today. He can get on and learn how to, you know, search himself, learn how to navigate a database. And a skill that's needed more and more. Right, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Technology is actually, um, it now plays a huge part in information literacy. So it's extremely um, important. I mean, my son is seven, so I want him to you know, start learning how to um, search things himself. And of course, every parent's fear is, you know, goodness, what's going to pop up when they start typing right. letters in. Right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So this has a way of keeping that out. It does, yes. Now you mentioned it's for children, but there are different levels that you can yes. scale up to? Yes, actually you can streamline search results um, for basic searchers to intermediate to advanced. Okay. Um, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, mm -hmm. now is it strictly text or there's some other media coming through it? Oh no, they have, they have a ton of kid-friendly media. So not only do they have books and magazines, they have interviews, they have images, graphs, they have over 16,600 images and wow. uh, 1,700 graphs. Wow. So, so yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff. this is a serious website. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect for... Would you want to take us on a little demo? Yes, I'd love to. Yes. Okay. And of course, um, as with any of our databases, you're going to go to lebanonlibrary.org, okay? And you go to our online databases, and you'll go under K for Kids Info Bits. Now, I have pulled up here the main screen. That'll be kids info bits that you pull up. And as you can see, it's, it's brightly colored. It has the subjects kind of laid out for you, the broad mm -hmm. range here. And at the top, see that has the giant search bar here. It's kind of easy for kids to kind of work with, okay? So let's say, you know, my son and I are, we're trying to study bats. So, you know, you type in bats here. All right, now what it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you search terms. Uh, basically, it's going to tell you all the books that it has, um, and if you scroll down, it'll have pictures, magazines, so you can start, you know, picking things that you want to, you know, news, what's, bats are in the news, that kind of thing. Wow. It's really, really neat. And up here at the top, I'll take you back to the top here, right here is the levels key. You can change the level. Uh, See, it's designed for elementary age students, mm -hmm. and those are the content levels. So you can change that as a parent. That's really nice. It is nice, yeah. Um, up here as well, you also have the bookmark for bookmarking any page that you want. And here in this section, it's got some neat stuff. It has educator resources, you know, for either uh, teachers or uh, parent, homeschool parents. Mm -hmm. um, a dictionary for children. Um, their search history, highlights, notes, things they can put into folders. Um, I love it. Um, my son and I have started using it and it, it's been great uh, for homeschool. 
That's wonderful. Yeah. Looks like a really good site. It is, it is. I encourage anyone with the children at home um, for their school projects, um, for their homework, if mom needs help, you know, uh, you know, trying to find things about lizards, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this might be a good one, you know, for them to check out. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. I hope parents will take you up on your absolutely, encouragement to, absolutely. to look into it. Yes. Well, great. Well, thank you, Holly. Coming up next, we'll look at the calendar highlights for November. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mike Kletzley, and let's look at the calendar highlights for November. On Tuesday, November 5th, we have the Homework Club from 4 to 5 p.m. That goes Tuesdays and Thursdays every other week. On Wednesday the 6th, we have the Turning Art Upside Down workshop, which starts at 4 o'clock. On Friday of that week, on the 8th, we have Homeschool Game Day as well as Game Day Friday. Those are morning and afternoon. On Tuesday the 12th of November, we have a craft class, Christmas Countdown Calendar it's called, and that starts at 6. On Saturday the 16th, we have a fairy tale party, and that's at 1 p.m. On Tuesday the 19th, we have Girls Who Code, third grade to fifth grade at 5 p.m., and that does run each Tuesday afternoon, except for the 26th. We do have Family Board Game Day on the 23rd, that's a Saturday, and that'll be at 1 p.m. And then on the 25th, that Monday, we have button making, the theme is Thanksgiving, and that will be at 6 p.m. And just to be aware, we are closed on Thanksgiving Day itself. That's the highlights for November. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.